press button. All right. Let me know. One. Button is pressed. Welcome back to Exalted Essence, Crimes of Nature. Last time, the Hearth began their descent into the Underworld, crossing an Underworld River after creating their strategy with the rest of the forces attacking the Mance of the Weaver upon the Loom of Flesh, and taking the, the predicted route of being the Vanguard out on the side to do sneaky weird shit. They have approached from an unexpected angle, surmounted the surrounding ring of mountains upon the Mance, and done some investigation of the area, and have set out their plan. They will provoke the horde of bio-monsters to the northwest of the Mance, in order to look like they are doing a predictable action against the Weaver to lull him into a false sense of security. Upon this, they will withdraw to a emplaced in the mountains onyx used as an uh, as a makeshift fortification and quickly just bum rush the war strider that is outside of the lance proper and beat the shit out of it and hopefully hijack it and use it to wreak absolute havoc in the forces to the south in order to open the way for the army and uh, get rid of the ablative chaff the weaver is relying on to be complacent with. There's very little left aside from to enact the plans. The first phase of which would be Angler uh, and Yang sneaking off towards the War Strider for evaluation and watching it, while the rest of the team, with Shireen, provokes the swarm of hunters, effectively, and other assorted miscellaneous bio-monster experiments that the Weaver deemed not up to caliber, and start a ruckus. So, the first step I will ask for is for Yang to make me a finesse navigate roll and then a finesse stealth roll that Angler can assist on either. I will assist on the stealth because that's what Angler is focusing on right now. Yep. Ah, oh, whoops. And so he rolled to assist first, then add the successes, right? Yes. Angler will roll on the yeah. So woo, that is seven extra dice to your stealth roll. Okay. Well. I'll do stealth Six. first, then. Or do I add a plus one onto that no matter what? Uh, the, it's always plus one because you're his hearth mate. Rad. Alright. That's good. Alright, yeah, uh, that is... You are not seen or heard by anything, and in fact are able to be so stealthy that you are able to do extra scouting on the way. Now roll your navigate roll to see how quickly and efficiently you get there. I know you have as the crow flies, but there is a twist in this. And... That's, that's enough. Because of the crow flies. So... You are able to use the most direct route from where you are at the base of the mountains while everybody is working to get Onyx up straight over the mountains towards the War Strider. The catch is, is that the most direct route that you are able to use is through some mountain passes. And you are able to notice the S uh, the stealth blah, 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 the scout escorts on the fringes of these mountains um, that are being used as the security. They are presumably had been once people ghosts. They are racked and warped into thin, skeletal, like, papery skin figures that resemble what was once a person. The thing that stands out most about them is that the ribs in the, on the back of their body have been burst open like spreading fingers or a cage that has been busted open from the inside and two enormous bulbous sacks that look like overinflated lungs are very slowly drawing false breaths in and out. 
you get the distinct feeling that if those things screamed, it would be loud enough to hear from multiple miles around. And that is almost certainly the sentry system, is whatever senses they use, if they detect anything fucky, they just start screaming. And you're not going to stop that. However, Yang is good enough at his job that he is able to identify that they have two primary ways of sensing things. Hearing, which is pretty easy to work around that, considering Yang has trained for that for his entire life. And what appears to be a form of essence sense, which Yang can confuse by using alchemical abilities, or not a cal uh, literal alchemical, like all of your thousand miracles within your cabinet to basically throw out false positives and fog banks and other things that baffle them, but not enough to make them scream. To things that are definitely by. like false positive use test cases that they probably planned for and be like, no, not that one. Yeah, no. You it's always like, know you, you would someday have the perfect use for the cologne that smells like rotting meat. Yeah, like stale blood that you were like, I'll probably get around to using this and now it's worthless for medical practices. You're like, wait, hang on. And you throw that out and they turn and they look and then they're like right on the line of like, is that is that living people blood or is that down here blood? And it's like you can get them fixated on that long enough to skirt by. So you are able to pretty much flawlessly get by these stealth patrols and figure out how they work and get a rough idea of how and where they're spaced out. Uh, and you don't get there particularly slow or particularly fast. You're just kind of getting there on time. So meanwhile, on the other side, there is the Bio Monster Division. Now I'm going to ask for a general combat roll well, first of all, I'm going to ask for a war roll from Obsidian as an assist roll to a general combat roll from Repose. Uh, bear with, because I am currently looking at things that may, in fact, one way or another... Oh, I know. <laughs> ...adjust this. you know oh god sorry mm -hmm. sometimes searching this pdf is uh yeah you know i'm not finding a, a final charm so let's take this one anyway We're both standing at the jumping off point at the edge of the mountains. Just, you want a man? Oh, you can man. <laughs> <laughs> you can Who's take it if you want to. Well, do you want to? The, the, Everybody's just waiting for the other just one. Both staring at this. Okay. No one's got their tank stance turned on yet. All right. So, war roll. 10d10. Yep. Uh, I don't see a moat cost for this, but I'm going to use a uh, flaw finding examination. All right. And go on for what uh, it's useful. Yeah. Uh, exalt spots weaknesses in her targets, defenses, or gear when use when using the reveal weakness gambit. Uh, reduce its cost by one to a minimum of one. Earth mates within close range of the dragon blood may use her craft or war in place of theirs. When they apply this gambit. Okay, yeah, that's more directly for in combat, but I will apply it here as this makes sense as you were scouting the enemy for weakness. I'll give you a two success bonus on that with your stunt, uh, with a stunt as well. And also, if uh, Repose wants to make any rolls during this, they can use craft for any weakness finding. Mm hmm. Uh, you said that was with a two stunt. Yeah.
All right, so that is six extra, well, seven extra dice to repose. All right, yeah, I'm into this. I see exactly how to use this. So repose has like spent any downtime during the moving and positioning of Onyx and the getting everyone else settled into place. Like scratching and pecking at the rocks around us at first as just a nervous tick, but then very quickly after Obsidian starts, you know, doing the math and pointing at things dramatically. <laughs> Repose Exalted instead point sword. settles into actually very methodically and carefully looking at parts of the mountain and occasionally making making a scratch, taking a chip away here and there extending a crack so that when it is time to launch the attack, Repose is just kind of in position to give one firm kick and drop <laughs> an avalanche in the general direction yes. of the fire monsters. Get, get yourself a start on that, holy shit. Uh, so that'll slam directly into dice cap then with the with the, or I could, I could hold off on the excellency and take just 19 dice. You know, just the only the 19. Just save the, if it's a one mode for one die, that's not economical in, the, in this system. Yeah. Let me drop the big rock. All right, so down on the expanses of barren land out around the manse, the first hint that the bio monsters get that they are about to have a very bad day is a sudden thunk. And they look up and they see a mountain peak go about three feet to the left. Just kind of a solid scoot on a single axis. And then it begins to slide downwards and it begins to cascade a shitload of rocks in front of it. And as they're just kind of staring there, just trying to comprehend this as this is not in their programming as to what is going on what is is this a pro oh this is a pro oh this is a problem crunch the entire front vanguard near the base of the mountain range probably at least several dozen of them are immediately killed by a cascade of falling rocks which the rest of them immediately respond to as the rocks are trying to murder us fucking get them and they scramble up the pile and are able, once they are surmounting it, to look up and see Obsidian and Repose very clearly, deliberately visible with the path up to Onyx just deliberately traced out. And the reaction is a complete just chorus of berserking, berserk screams as this tidal wave of malformed flesh and just absolutely... Like a, a, a mixture of waves of the same creature and then a bunch of one-off impossibilities are just scrambling up the rock face with only murder on their mind. So, what would the response to this be from the assembled still at Onyx? I have an idea, but I'm trying to formulate it in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm looking over my charms list, and unfortunately, I don't have much in the way of AoE. Yeah. Oh, okay, so... Yeah, I think this is so a Milan move. They are, they are trying to scramble over the rocks we dropped on them and up the mountain towards us. Yep, they are charging directly uphill. Boy, it would be a real shame if we had two air aspects you could turn all that rubble into, I don't know, like a tornado of sa of rock? Sure would be, yeah. So I would like to offer up a... Probably a war roll for me and um, Shirin to just create a... Um, a hazard on the field that 
that hinders the bio monsters. I'd say spend a moat and roll a war roll, and Shireen will roll to assist you. So the assist comes first, then I make the roll, right? Uh, yes. Holy shit, Shireen! Yeah, we're, we're in go mode. Yeah, that's uh, seven dice to you. So, yeah, I'll fluff how she helps once you get your pool. <laughs> okay. Right. So, they're scrambling up the mountain on what they think is solid rock. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, it is first Shireen who, once you have co coordinated this idea with her, she is the first mover. She does not have the raw essence that you do. She does not have the sheer metaphysical weight. But she's got two things on her side. Well, three, honestly. The first thing she has on her side is absolute, monomaniacal, tunnel vision bloodlust towards creatures of darkness due to her upbringing in the house of Ladal. She is focusing literally every single fiber of her entire being on this, to the point where you are worried she might just bust a nosebleed and fall over from the sheer muscular tension in her body as she is channeling the essence. The second thing that she has is that her intense study of the late shogunate period and leading into the contagion, there was a lot of really large-scale wars in those periods, and a lot of the gods in particular were gods of very large-scale things, especially on the battlefield. So she is familiar with a lot of historically extremely famous tactical maneuvers that, oh, say, a bunch of meat monsters would have no idea about. The third thing that she has to her advantage is quite simple. Gravity. As the sheer density of the rocks that fell down and the pulped gore of all the creatures within them lubricates the blocks enough that it doesn't take a particularly intense level of wind to just start activating another cascading reaction as the friction is so much lower that all she has to do is find the exact right crack and put a gust of wind not just in but in and then suddenly and violently up to lurch the rocks up a couple of feet off the ground to throw them all off their feet, slam back down onto a lubricated surface, and now the rocks are sliding again, and this is where Milan steps in. God, I actually just kind of want her... Her, <laughs> if you want her, move, her move to be just so like okay no we're going to your plan Shireen I like this better <laughs> so like Shireen actually looks over to Milan expecting okay now you do the and then just sees Milan just staring and just turns it's like I think you got just, it just a, sl a slow <laughs> thumbs up <laughs> she just kind of looks really confused and slightly dismayed before turning back and realizing what's going on and then the lights just turn back on in her eyes and she just starts throwing bolt after bolt of air pressure into the rocks at the exact points that she can see that they're unstable and is just throwing them into the sky and having the boulders propel themselves and just creating a churning it's like a gizzard. It's the rocks are constantly smashing into each other and pulping everything on the mountain into gore if they are taking that route. Enough well, of the bio monsters are uh, adaptable enough that they realize this is happening and they try to get out of the way, but it is left mostly to the ones that were not on the mountain already to learn to not step on the loose rocks because the ones that did are basically all dead by the time the crowd reacts. Milan's going to signal to the archers to, to stand down. Their killing field is no longer needed. Right now. Yeah, they, they, they release from the drawn and they wait for the army to keep going upward before they start to do a draw again. As Shireen, you can actually tell, um, roll me... Let's call this, um, probably Finesse Presence to make her stop. 
she's going to keep doing this until she falls over, until unless you stop her. Three successes. All right, how would how would Milan try to convince Shireen? Okay, this is good and all, but like you you need to keep some gas in the tank. Milan is going to after several attempts of okay, it we we can let we can let the uh, the artillery take over. Uh, Shireen, Milan is going to have to like put food in front of her face, like. You're gonna need this. She very just is completely fixated, just eyes completely wide, pupils dilated, and Iris is trembling. And then all of a sudden, a skewer of just mixed vegetables and like rice balls is put in front of her eyes. She's like almost reflexively tries to smack it out of her way as just something obstructing her vision until her senses tell her, wait, food? And all of a sudden, she realizes, oh my god, I'm suddenly, like, seven hours hungrier than I should be. What was I doing? And then she just looks down, and the moment the bloodlust and the adrenaline are beginning to wear off as she is reevaluating where she is, she kind of looks horrified at what she just did. Not entirely horrified, someone a little proud, but just like, ah! <laughs> so I, I know my, my sandpit idea would have worked. I like that better. Uh, how, how long? How 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 long? How, how how much? You were there about ninety seconds. Only? Really? Yeah. She actually puts two fingers against her throat. Tap, just like feeling her pulse. Blinks. Oh, I don't, well, hundred. Under foot I need to sit down. Yeah, let's let's uh let's go back into Onyx. She uh like takes a couple of steps and then realizes, ooh, I need I I should not be walking, and then just very deliberately just kind of holds onto your shoulder to walk back to the boat, because if she does not restrain herself to walk back, she would just probably sprint straight back and then either trip over a rock or slam into the door without opening it. She is still coming down off of the bloodlust. Well, Obsidian, job's done. The, uh... No, yeah, I can safely say the job is done. Yeah, um, you have by far thinned enough of the immediate swarm that the crew of Onyx and all of your um, all of your recruits and militia can definitely hold their own for a while until the really big motherfuckers come up at which point they're still probably fine once Onyx itself begins to contribute but yeah I think we're gonna call that one the juicer I believe it's actual term in the um, but there, there was a battle of, um, she's like list between two different shogunate families, and she's like, there, there, there was a, there was a tight mountain pass, and there had been an avalanche the prior morning, and a combination of a hearth was able to change the tectonic activity of the dragons in the region and change the rocks, and I, I don't, I don't recall the precise name to it. I, I think it was something like pa, pa, pa Siops Gizzard, or it was something along those. I, I don't want, I don't want to take a name something that already has a name. Is that why they call that place the Scarlet Field? Yeah. I always thought it was named after. Uh... Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was. She just looks suddenly impressed. I always thought it was named after. Well, you know who, but. Well, no, that that makes sense. You know, they said that the, for about 200 years, they still were putting the war dead's angry ghosts back down into the ground. Uh, they, 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 it was apparently a rather miserable way to... She just kind of looks back down at the mountain and pales a little bit before also just going, fuck him, and then just turns kind of back and immediately stops thinking about it. Okay, going to roll a uh, check that... Does, does Milan... Okay, Milan restrains himself from blushing uncontrollably. <laughs> uh, 
Hmm. Does Shireen notice, first of all? No. Okay. She, is, she is completely lost in her own head to realize that she is doing something she would normally find embarrassing or too close contact. She is just completely discombobulated right now and is just kind of hanging off of your shoulders. I love these two dorks. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that is the two setup phases. And let us move on. I, I have a punchline to offer oh, go up right ahead. to the bio monster engagement. So, uh, Pose will kind of swoop down to survey the aftermath of of the move. Then just kind of grip and rip a sizable chunk out of one zombie and go looking around for any that are still standing that seem particularly, like, tall, imposing, mm -hmm. lucid by zombie standards. He will just kind of, you know, make a sudden noise to catch his attention, lock it firmly in eye contact, give a bit of a flex, <laughs> but then toss the, the chunk of fresh dead meat off in a direction other than up the mountain. <laughs> the few that seem to have awareness beyond a basic animal instinct to just hunt and kill do take this as just kind of like a, you know what? I'm going to imply thoughtful gift technique to persuade <laughs> to attempt to get some of the zombies to break off from. Go right ahead, yeah. With the stun. From the attack. This is too much effort for snack. We have snack at home. Uh, finesse, embassy. And you said you were awarding a stunt on that? Yes. So. So, ten. <laughs> Mythically successful, just <laughs> corpse whispering. Yeah, basically all of them that are not literally hardwired to, to just if living, then murder. Just kind of look at that. Look at the pile of gore at the base of the mountain and just kind of non-verbally, communally just come to the, you know what? Nah, 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 just go back down and realize, you know what, we could just scavenge all the gore in the rocks and that's going to be good. You know, it's not going to be as tasty, but that's plenty of good eating. And then, yeah, that leaves just basically just the berserker units left, which is a very much reduced contingent. Very good. Bio monster situation phase one under control. All right. And now we switch over to the map as I will just switch over to music as well. Oh, a little loud. So. There is no real stealth to approaching the Chthonian Colonian. It is on a relatively wide open, flat field, and the moment that a goddamn mountain falls over, it's pretty much on alert. So, there is, uh, you can place yourselves wherever you want on this map by the terrain features or whatever you would like, but there is no sneaking up on this. It is extremely just... By the time you get in range to make any sort of combat relevant action, it knows you're here and it knows where you are. Engler and Yang had enough time to get somewhere to watch though, right? We're not all in the yeah. same spot. Yeah, you the, explicitly I am letting you set up in advance before I actually do anything. And can you point out what these features uh, so are all around the map? Yeah, our features here. So we got like some yes. spires. So this is, these are three kind of 
uh, underworld bedrock spires that have been twisted and warped upwards. This is a rift in the ground that has stale blood bubbling up from within it. It's kind of like a small scale version of a river. It basically has punctured deep enough to hit, air quotes, groundwater. This over here is a kind of large cauldron caldera divot in the ground that is full of something god-awful and biological smelling, vaguely like pus or vomit. It is something really gross. You're not sure what it is, but it is it is not something that you think you want to be personally in, but you might find a use for it. And this right here is my poor attempt to draw a basically a a wave cliff face with this being the overhanged bit in shadow. So this is a like range band or two higher than everything around it. These spires are about around range band high. And if you have any particular requests for environmental stuff to use, I will be able to modify the landscape to use it because this is, again, going to be not only a war strider fight, which is going to be a different kind of flow, it is also going to be a rather involved series of actual fight. You are going to want advantages. How high is somehow on top of this spire. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you probably just thousand rope find onto it while it was turned around before the mountain fell off. Hey, question, uh, anima. That is goes up by one every time you spend a moat. Yes. Uh, what does it cap out at? Ten. Okay. There we go. Uh, angler would be with Yang because Angler's gonna ask Yang to launch him as high up as he possibly can. Yeah, it just probably would have dragged the angler up alongside on the spire then. This is the self same. Oh god, it happened. This is the same uh, fucking robot that I'm gonna hijack, right? Yes. Yeah, this, this is the worst rider. <clears throat> Alright, yeah. I just wanna be as close as possible then. Yeah, feel, yeah advanced team is on the spire. The rest of us are dramatically cresting on this the cliff. cliff. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, the moment that you get into view, there is just an immense deafening bellow from the War Strider as it begins to stomp forward towards you at a remarkably and kind of frighteningly fast pace for something so huge. It is, even if it is movements are slow, it is able when it is like, its strides are gigantic if its movements are slow. So, to determine who goes first, I'm just going to have a... Because right now there is only one actor on the enemy field, I'm just going to make it a evens are allied team, odds are the War Strider and its tricks. So... Alright, evens. Uh, player team goes first, as is uh, established in the one or two combats we've done. It's popcorn initiative, so you all pick which person on the player team is going first. If we want to do some sort of a combo move, how does that work? Uh, I will allow some flexibility on that with like a held action or something like that. Okay. Uh, real quick, son, my idea is you do some sort of launch thing and Angler's going to use mountain... Stop, what is it called? Uh, mountain crossing leap. An angler wants to get as high as possible that he can in the place and come down on the Cthonian. I can't say that name right now. Cthonian, yeah, Colonian. I deliberately My voice made hurts it too weird. much. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a way to launch people, do I? I mean, you do have a ballista. Oh, I still have that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can turn your crossbow into the ballista. Okay, well, I'll held action, then I just say, like, well, if it's the part of the combo action, your action would probably be just activating that charm for its cost. I mean, yeah. I would assume, assume I already have it out, because I'm probably also going to try and launch myself into the War Strider and... Yeah, the so... Pre-spend the moats, have it activated, hold your action, and get ready to fire. There's a very good scene of Sono, or, uh, Yang, launch me! Huh? What? Can I do that? All right, the Colonian advances forward as the barrel of the immense fire wand from its shell levels out towards the cliff. 
and it plants its feet after it stops moving, and then all of a sudden shifts its legs inward into the shell and has immense soul steel plates slam down as they retract in, and giant uh, iron, uh, iron and soul steel struts slam out to embed themselves into the ground as braces where the legs had been so to create an artillery emplacement. And the barrel of the gun begins to glow a dull red. It is charging the gun. Is it tilted forwards or backwards? Uh, the gun is aimed towards the people on the cliff. I, I should be more specific. Is its head, quote-unquote, tilted downwards or backwards? Because if, or upwards, because it, that might be with how its uh, balance is. Uh, the head is still out and aimed straight forward towards the cliff, but not okay. looking up in particular. It's kind of oh, like on we, uh, level. Can we get the initiative tracker out to be yes. the power bars? Yes, one second. Let me just clean this up. Add turns. So everybody onto the thing. I will not be giving the Worst Rider its own power bar, as I am in lieu of having the full official mechanics making up my own. How dare you. Alright, so Angler's turn. Or, I presume, if that's going to become the move. I'd like to do that now, if possible, unless someone over on the cliff has something really... Uh, from what we learned on the uh, Tyrant fight, the turtle will not go two rounds in a row, so there will be two player actions before I can do again. Fuck it, I'm going. Alright. Alright, Angler's going to use Mountain Crossing Leap Technique and anything boosted from the ballista to get literally as high as possible, and he wants to come crashing down on the back of the turtle. And in the process of landing on the turtle's back as his quote-unquote action, because his uh, move action ability is the mountain crossing leap, he mm -hmm. wants to use, uh, let me find it, uh, feeling the dragon's bones to find any kind of cracks or fissures or fractures in its hide, its shell, or whatever, so he can find a way to ooze in later. Alright, so Ballista, I'll say, adds an extra range band of movement. So you go... It says three range bands forward or two straight up. I'll let the Ballista move you that. Yeah, that is enough to land on top of it. You don't get... You have to do a pretty heavy arc shot. You don't go extremely high. You do need to have a lot of lateral movement to make it from your range. But you are able to get pretty goddamn high up before you crash back down. Yeah. The, and then uh, part mm -hmm. of mountain soaring leap technique is when you land, uh, you ignore falling damage and crate the ground where you land, knocking prone all extras. There's no extras within close range and damaging the ground below them. All right. Yeah, I just took a look at that. Okay, and reading the dragon's bones. Is there a roll on that, or is it just automatic awareness? Let me take a look at that. Well, it, it's built, well there probably would be a roll to try to find uh, any kind yeah. of fissures in there, so let me use an awareness something something. Seven. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I got any bonuses or penalties from the... That's... Uh, it's alright. Uh, that is enough. So, you are able to launch yourself, and it is clear from the tracking that the turtle's head turns slightly to put you in view of one of its eyes, but then turns back to keep looking at the cliff. It's not clear as if it's dismissing you, or if it knows, okay, I can't un un siege mode and do anything about this, so... So you smash down on top of it, and Yang is probably- I'm just gonna put Yang here right now for just being airborne. Here. Yang probably just aimed at a higher up arc to give Hang time. Um, Using uh, Reading the Dragon's Bones, you were able to get a pretty- 
uh, brief but detailed glimpse of the internal diagramming. The legs are all in their own separate chambers. Uh, again, it is set up to be segmented so it can enter and exit a siege mode of sorts. The head has a connection to some sort of essence reactor on the inside through the mouth. Uh, it is also able to retract the head and put it behind a bunker of soul steel. The cannon also has a path to that essence reactor. And the essence reactor is a couple of meters of very reinforced plating between it and the cockpit. You're actually not sure how you get in the cockpit of this thing until you realize something. This is designed for exalt use and for elemental use. This is meant to be somebody who can transit through something as an elemental energy to be in there. Okay. The quickest way to brute force in would be to jump inside of the essence reactor, which is about as dangerous sounding as that sounds, uh, and then just blast a hole through the plating. Or find a way to use its essence conduits to just deliberately plunk you down inside the control pod. I will relay that information to the whole crew via, I'm sure our net is up at this point. Yes. Or has been up or what have you. But that's my move. And I'll put the little red marker thingy on me to say that I've made my move. Okay, and I'll... Oh, that's... There we go. Yep. Alright. The Colonian... Uh, continues to charge the gun, but upon feeling Angler upon its back, just shudders violently all of a sudden. At which point there is a sudden boiling feeling beneath Angler's feet as the plating, very th the thin rivulets between the plating that hadn't been breaches that you could go all the way into, but were exposure to the essence conduits, begin to bleed profusely as all of a sudden the blood begins to it just spray out and pool and rise and an old face is in front of you time for four fiends oh good stuff Just switch on over. Which, which one is that? That was Hateful Eyes. That is the Blood Elemental. Ah. Player turn. And uh, the proper actual name of this one being shown is that it was the only one of the four fiends that didn't have it uh, changed or shown. Shadow of the what elemental? I'm sorry. Angler what elemental? Is... Okay. Thy flesh consume. We never really compiled the information I would have divined from a training montage of infiltrating a war mech. What is Yang's plan? <laughs> I um, would have one. I don't. Yeah, I know. Um, roll me finesse sagacity to adapt your plan to the information that you have. So, yeah, I think that's just a 10. Ah, this dice are betraying. All right, so the best plan that you can think of if it is completely sealed off by any tra traditional means of entry is to flush out the pilot to either disable the war strider immediately or otherwise just start fucking with it on the outside until some manner of entrance shows itself. Which, as you remember, this thing is operating on a cycle of elements that does not include wood. So, the best thing that you can do right now, probably, is to just start throwing wood essence at it via charms or attacks. That you can think of. I'll have to figure out another way to bring this setup in on this. I should have thought about this earlier. Uh, uh, it's alright. Mind if I take the action? Clifftop crew has to do things. Yep. Uh, 
I don't want to be on this hi this hill anymore. So Milan is going to take a running uh, jump and mount onto jump off the hill and mount onto Stalwart Daughter. Yes, right. combat horse. Let me put her down on the map. And now we get the sequence from Peace Walker, where Big Boss has to chase down the giant mech on the on horse. horse. Uh, oh. I don't know what dictates which tokens go over what, so side by side. Okay, so, and for my, my action, I'm going to be performing an outmaneuver gambit. I need to I need to be able to move and see all angles of this thing and figure out where is it elementally weak. Where can I drive that? Where can I mess with the uh, elemental balance on this thing? So I need to get I need first things first, I need to get out of the way of the cannon. Yes, you do. All right. So, yeah, up maneuver gambit. Oof, just three successes. All right. Um, let me double check exactly how the outmaneuver team is going to work and adapt that to uh, the War Strider. So, uh, difficulty three. Uh, since we're at the, the start of things, you'd be doing some kind of build power. You yeah, you'd be doing build power before gambit, you do right. a gambit. Then, yeah, this is a building power without attacking action. Yeah. To outmaneuver. This is probably yeah. the outmaneuver uh, is a build yeah. power without attacking. Yeah. You just uh, I I misspoke when I said gambit. Power. I meant yeah. Yeah, build yeah. power. Okay. Yeah, you were doing build power, so you gain three power. The bare minimum. And then I am uh may move themselves to a hidden location or cover waiting to press the advantage. Mul Milan's outmaneuver is to get out of range of beam get out of the angle of fire. Yeah, that would put you about here. As you are beginning to ride counterclockwise around it and just desperately start examining the situation for weaknesses in the elements. The shell looks damn near impenetrable to any sort of conventional arms, and even by the terms of exalts, uh, that would be a hell of an ask to just punch through it with even artifact weaponry or beams or anything else like that. You're going to need to look for unavoidable weaknesses that are part of the design that you can't account for. Like, say, the mouth, or the barrel of the cannon, or any other breach that is currently accessible. I've just had a terrible idea, but okay, that's my turn. Alright. And instead of Turtle's turn, so because it can't do two in a row, it is Thy Flesh Consumes' turn. It just sees Angler, and it is unclear at first how much of the same elemental is present, how much it remembers, but the sheer level of immediate, oh no, fuck you, and just lashing out at full force indicates that it might have a solid memory of how it died, with a boot down its throat screaming horribly. Okay, it is going to roll a build power action against Angler of just attacking. What? Alright, so that is six successes, and that is against yours. No, Soak is for decisive. Is it your defense that subtracts? Sorry, I'm juggling a lot in this fight. What number can I tell you? Uh, I'm just double checking real quick. For defense is the difficulty yeah. of the attack roll. Yeah, the defense. So what is your defense? Barrier dodge or barrier evasion, excuse me. Uh, yeah, whichever one you would either, be using. Either is six. All right, so it has a pool of six, so it is exactly meeting it, but not able to, to surpass it. So it cannot 
Uh, each extra success gains one power to the pool. And yeah, yeah so a tie does not give landed one. Landed a hit. So it is able basically to lash out with its like its bloody hand, halfway solid, halfway liquid, and grab you by the forearm. But you are able to block it and with your gauntlets and not be like severely endangered by it. So that is the enemy turn. Obsidian and Repose have yet to act. All right. So in this state, uh, I can't use two charms on one turn, right? You can if they are not on the same step. I have. Okay. They, they will comment in, like, spend a moat on step blank. Well... Okay. <laughs> Hold up. This doesn't say on step blank. Then that is probably a charm that is not meant to be used. Well, not expected or not to be not attached used to combat. combat time. What do you think? Which which means you can use it. Uh. Okay. Uh. So I've already marked out my character there. Uh. Mm -hmm. I'm expending one immediately for a uh, Earth defending vigil. Yep. I'm, entering, I'm entering tank stance. Shield oppose, appears above my head. Um, right. Uh, start of combat, I activated uh, Wind Dragon yes. form. Yep. Uh, the follow-up is, once again, but I feel more fitting in this situation, and maybe consider this as a... Hold up, I gotta turn. <sighs> now that I am actually speaking myself. There you go. There, there's the good volume. Um, combo. You know, no, no, no. Uh, let's consider this a generate power action. Mm hmm. Um, as Obsidian surfs down the side of the mountain and makes a run for the uh for the behemoth uh of uh what's it called again uh flaw finding examination mm -hmm. to find any any hole in this thing's armor well again doing the gambit is after first you build after the power, you build the then power. You spend the power so so you need to build the power first and then you can use flaw finding you do a setup turn then but wait, collection turn. is this an attack? Power is used for uh, not just attacks. Gambits are attack substitutes. Yeah. Oh. Instead of punching somebody, I look real hard to find the flaw in their armor, or I think real hard, or I tell somebody, hey, look over there, etc. Real hard. All right. Um, in that case, let me find a alternative... Move. Build power without attacking. Prepare, focus, inspire, rally, outmaneuver. I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to find an, an alternate move. Oh, yeah. What was this charm? What is this charm? Not exactly searching the page correctly. There we go. Did uh, the blood elemental get any power from its attack on me? It succeeded. It just didn't exceed it. Uh, yeah, it did not get power. It was not. It, it hit. It hit, but did not exceed your defense. Huh. Gotcha. Thank you.
Okay. Um, I have an idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't have one ready for me in my in my brain, but uh, build power with sort of a. I'm sorry. Give me the list of, of the things again. Uh, the default build power actions that are not based on attacks are rolling attribute ab ability versus difficult three. Prepare, craft sagacity, focus, awareness, integrity, and physique. Inspire, performance, and presence. Rally, embassy, and war. And outmaneuver, navigator, stealth. Basically, do me, hmm? uh, do me a favor. At, at some point when you have a chance, message those to me. Yeah, uh, I can just do that right now. Okay. Um... What would be the attack based ones other than, you know, just close combat or range combat or whatever? Uh, combat? Build power without attacking. All of these are not a direct attack. These are all I'm not in range to do something or I'm doing something else and I'm fighting. I'm rolling. But, but what I'm saying is the actual attack based ones. That is just uh, force or finesse plus close combat versus their defense. However, I will tell you for free right now, uh, attacking the worst rider is going to do nothing. Yeah, not my plan. Um, pretty much, I want to use presence, but it's not actually an inspire. I want to build power by attempting to distract thy flesh consumed. Yeah, all right. Go ahead and roll. Some sort of insult is hurled in his direction. And my massive lungs carry it on the winds. All right, so you get three power from that by exceeding the base difficulty. And uh, for flavor, I don't know how far I can get, but we I am moving towards the strider. Okay. All right, so enemy turn. The Colonian gets to act. The Colonian's gun is charged. Repose, give me a finet. Um. Hmm. Better way of putting this. Repose, you are get to, about to get shot at by a giant fucking artillery cannon. What would your reflexive reaction to this be? The cannon that is aiming at the top of this cliff that I've been standing on dramatically. Yes. It is artillery. It can only aim so granularly. Relax and fall off the cliff. <laughs> All right. Uh, just, yeah, uh, give me a fortitude physique roll to just kind of no sell falling off the cliff. While this is happening, spending one to activate elemental protection set to earth and fire. Yep. Build a little bit of animal. Well, all right, let me make sure that it actually commits those properly. Wait, yes. You can choose multiple elements for elemental protection? Yeah, it, it improves as your essence goes up. Yeah, with a higher essence, you can. Hold up, gotta look at this move a little bit more. And that was finesse athletics was the request there. Or uh, fortitude, fortitude physique. athletics, fortitude physique. Uh, yeah, to just kind of like thunk on the ground and be fine. You've had worse. Here's your four. You just kind of yeah, down. Repo repose just kind of cat scruff reactions off the cliff. Seconds like maybe heartbeats before. An absolute, <laughs> like, flesh-searing, bone-obliterating, incinerating ray of flame shoots over the top of the cliff. And then hits nothing. It just goes straight into the air. And that is the turn of the, uh, Colonian. Uh, so, the initiative order resets and rolls back around. So everyone is everyone is now to free to do actions again. It is time for I am looking at I'm looking at things. I'll also note that uh, stance is up. 
I have a plan. All right, go ahead. Would you like to go first, though, the one? Uh, yes, just because I'm I'm doing further setup, so... Go ahead. Yeah, so... I am activating uh, Rider and Mount Unity. Uh, rides into battle as, uh, as one mine with their mount. Uh, I may use movement and defensive charms on my mount as though they were myself. Comma... I am activating Eagle, Eagle Wind style. <laughs> so for this, as I'm circ I'm circling this. Shout out the Colossus boss. Uh, Stalwart daughter stops running and starts loafing. She doesn't stop moving. <laughs> Just kind of the- like sinuous dragon wiggle through the sky, but it's a horse. So, uh, by the way, I've spent my my fifth uh, moat, so I am now in air uh, now aura. In While in air aura, the exalt flies as per Luna mode. Comma, Luna mode. Mighty wings unfold from uh, their back. The exalt may fly indefinitely at any range above the ground. Yeah. Milan now has complete perfect flight. Which means that Stalwart Daughter has complete perfect flight. Now... Let's talk about Soaring Zephyr Flight. Dragon Blood, this is the Dragon Blood uh, effect. So I may spend two anima while I'm flying and I can lay down a severe cold hazard below me. All right. So that will pull you at three anima. Where would you put the cold I, I, hazard? Uh, I don't know if I, I have to do that now or I can do that while in flight. I think you that's a can like that okay. uh, at, you can, as an action spend two anima and put down hazard. Okay, so I'm I'm just taking to the air right now. Yeah, you are now probably at shorter medium range above the ground just doing flying donuts to evaluate the area. Okay, that was my movement action. <laughs> now for Now for my further okay, uh I'm going to god what is Sorry, I gotta scroll back to combat section. Building power. Uh, I'm gonna do prepare as I'm just going to start coalescing this air energy that I'm releasing from myself and stalwart daughter into turning me into an air aspected uh, jet fighter with a missile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's uh, that's eleven successes. Eleven success. Okay, so I'm uh, up to fourteen power. Uh, what? Well, hold, hold on. Okay. What, what exactly are you doing? Uh, prepare. Uh, I am preparing a giant uh, air elemented. Uh, also, I think the cap of power is ten. Okay, so I'm going to ten power. All right. All so right. yeah, you are fully loaded. Okay. I will just change your initiative on the tracker. Well, power on the tracker. Okay, As so the, you, the max power you can gain or have is 10. Half. Half. Okay, I am... I am loaded with my air gun. And that's my turn. All right, turn rolls back around. The Colonian gets to act. Its movement action is to take itself out of siege mode as things have dramatically made it to the point where, okay, that's not happening. And its combat action is going to be another channeling of essence outward. This time, as its legs come back out and stomp into the ground, there is an intense tremor through the ground that makes the dust begin to rise and coalesce as... Let me just grab you and... Another familiar face, very angry, reappears. This was air, right? This was the earth elemental in the wild pocket. Mm, And, uh, right, nameplate. Good old dust. A good old shit. (laughs) That name stuck. It died and came back, and it's still got that name. It's still mad. (laughs) 
So that is the enemy turn for this turn. Uh, player now act. I have a plan. Go so I know how to leverage properly the the montage of the training and stuff. I want to say that, okay, so you know the lock picking lawyer? Oh god, that's a way to start. Yeah, let's go. How he sometimes brings out those weird like tools that he's literally hand laid for like very specific, specific things. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm gonna say a lot of that training was A to know like what the fuck you're looking for and B to be able to know how to make a tool that is just designed to get in there and start wrecking shit. Just starts field stripping it somehow. Alright. Yeah, you know, whatever size bolt it is, whatever millimeter knife you need to be able to wedge things in there. I'm gonna grasping rope find the weapon. Uh, Dramatically enough, I wanna do the same one that Wildcat Strike climbed into. So you're Just going directly into the gun barrel. No, I want to climb on top of the gun. Okay, you're on top of the gun barrel. I want to climb on top of and run down it really dramatically with my arms behind my back and then start field stripping whatever I can get my hands on. I don't I don't care what it is. I'm just going to start tearing. All right, finesse craft with the stone. Your gambit difficult. Well, the not gambit. Your difficulty on the roll is five. Let me see if I can get a... <laughs> I must have a charm for this or something. I could tag. Did Yang get any bonus from me feeling out the, uh, using the dragons? Uh, yes, dragon you get bonus. two successes automatically. Okay. So let's just, that effectively just makes it difficult, D3. Oh, how about sudden trap attack? Through ingenuity, efficacy is playing, the exalt, may craft excellent traps and prepare the battlefield to surprise their foes. Would that work here? <laughs> yes, yes, actually. You just start booby trapping the outside of the damn thing. And also, clever improvisation method. The Exalt sees the potential on all things, using only materials at hand to reinforce by her essence. She pieces together a useful tool. Well, I guess it's the same thing. Mm hmm Of just like, yes, these are the two getting things your that tools. to be like... Yeah, that's your mechanical tools. justification for being able to do this. Uh, does Wondercrafted Initiation count here, too? Do what now? Wondercrafted initiation, ignoring at the feet of a master, the exalt unlocks the secret to evoking wondrous power. Oh, yeah, you, that's you know how artifacts, artifacts work. work. Which, again, yeah, that is allowing you to do this. It's specifically, this is just learning writer. about, like, okay, so yeah, I guess all these three things are just like, me this is your combo no, combination. Really, I know it's a control, just like, I'm going to pretend I am the boss on top of a giant gun and just start tearing. Yeah, Yang is actually quite qualified to do this. As you settle down, you would kind of realize. You know, this is a new problem, but it's just kind of a combination of problems I already know. All right. Well, here we go. <laughs> All right. That is four threshold successes over the difficulty. So you begin to sit down on top of the gun and you realize, okay, the gun itself is a pretty much solidly cast bit of uh, soul steel. You're not actually going to do much to strip the outside barrel. Now, on the other hand, if you go inside, you realize a couple of things. There is a metal shroud on the shell where the gun is able to adjust up and down for its axis, which means that there must be some sort of articulating mechanism on the inside to let the gun move, which means you need to get past that metal, and you can't have a perfectly flush connection in that metal or else it wouldn't be able to move. So you pull out your toolkit, and you get out a very thin combination file and crowbar, and just start scoring the inside of the uh, movement mechanism. And the this is the first thing to really get a reaction out of the War Strider, as it suddenly tries to just shake its legs and rip its shell around and shake you off desperately as Probably the pilot the recognizes what's like going on. Gecko grips or something, because, like, being shaken off is also an engineering problem of, well, the thing doesn't want me to be here. Yeah, like, uh, thy flesh consumed an angler are grappling on top of the thing on top of the shell. So they're just swaying back and forth as they suddenly look over to see Yang just kind of squatting in front of the base of the gun before there is a loud metallic thunk as the maintenance panel pops to the side and uh, Yang can see the gears and the uh, flywheels of the artillery maneuvering. You now have a direct shot into the mechanisms of this thing under the shell. 
you are now operating outside of the parameters of expected method of entry. That's probably all I can get into it for a turn because it needs that to is, be that is your to first the, turn. Uh, to the that is that is open the fuse box. That's concerning. Yeah, that is phase one of dismantling the war strider is access a method of entry complete. I like to imagine that the entire time Yang was just taking out that weird like rope file and just whistling a jolly little tune as he started to fucking score metal. <laughs> All right, as this is going on, the Dust Elemental turns around to look at Yang, the person who gave it the humiliating label, and is now cracking into the War Strider and casts out with a dead necrotic hand as the dust raises back up towards the gun. And one moment. That's right, it's Mechanics Pop Quiz! It's time... For Grand Cross Delta. How many as, mechanics do you remember? As it flicks its hand and a just swarm of entities begin to appear around the War Sprider approaching Yang on the barrel, which I will move Yang to make that a thing once I ready. Uh Uh, let's see here, switch to objects and tokens, so you would be about here. To leave the Reaper here, here, and here, the Lingering Decays here, and here. If you do not remember out of character, you can make in-character rolls to remember what these things were doing in the fight in the wild. What's the roll on? Uh, that would be... Uh, a stat of your choice plus sagacity. Five. All right, the lingering decays were piles of unquiet dead and dead bodies that burst into explosions and um, basically line attacks after a while. The Ash Reapers had a slow pursuit pattern and were able to, when they coalesced as a unit, summon what looked like a much more dangerous creature that at the time they did not have the time to finish summoning. So they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to try to hunt Yang down and probably do something horrible if they get in direct contact or try to summon something worse. That is Vincent's turn. And it is back to player actions. Repose Shield Angler can still act. Uh Alright. So I am going to make a action. Mm -hmm. so, uh, two charms are going to be used here. Mainly one is passive, one is offensive. Mm -hmm. uh, first thing, I'm activ activating elemental yeah. defense. Uh, and I'm activating it for water and air all now right. a note about elemental defense is that level three it gives that passive to all ally all hearth mates yeah so everyone is defended against everything but wood now <laughs> knowing glance <laughs> to repose oh my do the thing we did the thing um And then I am going to not in... Oh, right. Okay, good. This is... When does your anima start flaring? 
Uh, you get into Aura at 5, and I believe Flare is past... Uh, it's glowing, flaring bonfire, I think. Okay, that's so like, I'm, I'm and not that's in. Any, that's any for 10, I think, is the breakpoints. Okay, I'm not in a in a mode yet. That's fine. Yeah. Um, keep track of numbers. Uh, so while he is distracted, and he's Earth. Hold up, I am trying to think, because I've had this in my head for that in order to do uh, elemental infusion what's it fucking called uh yeah yeah I, I want the exact term here uh oh lord what is the name hold up it's all it's all my list of, of charms i can just look at that um dragon grace weapon i have had this in my head canon of obsidian obsidian can do fire on his own but mm -hmm. in order to do the other elements, he carries something representing the elements on him. Yep, yep. And I can't think what to do for... Uh, this is something I've not been able to figure out, is what to do for, uh... For wind. A leaf, maybe? Yeah, a fan, a uh, pinwheel. A dandelion, actually. Yeah. All right. He somehow has a bag of smoke. <laughs> Dry eyes. Um. So. He approaches the earth element. Dust element, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And pulls out a dandelion out of his satchel. And blows it at the rings on his sword. And then <laughs> in, in one motion, and it, it looks like he misses, but in essence, he is rolling the rings across the back of the elemental. God, all right. I am combining air and sound. Good, excellent, yes! <laughs> there is this brief moment where Vincent just turns around, very dismissively looking down at you, like, what are you doing? And then feels the essence coursing up across its back, and very fully turns around to face you, just like, oh shit. This is not something they did last time, oh no. <laughs> Um, and this is going to be, I don't, my brain says combat, but I don't know what kind of role this is to, like, I guess, channel the artifact. Are you trying to build power with this? Yes. This is another build power action. I'd say finesse close combat works for this. Okay. Uh, in that case, and I'm going to. At some point, stop going quite as loud, but... I mean... That's... That's right, motherfucker. <laughs> Obsidian bought close combat mastery. <laughs> it's time for excellencies. So that's gonna be... It's, uh... You add your essence, right? Or you add... You double the value. Yes, you add the dice again. Okay. As dice. Oh, you're close combat, not everything. Yeah. Yes. So that's a five. All right. Uh, that is going to be... What is its current defense? Let's see. You are using elements that are going to debuff it, so it's going to be lower. Times Which, is... specifically, uh, its attacks are deathly cold. When it deals damage, the target suffers a cumulative minus one die penalty to physical rolls. Okay, this is not damage, this is building power, but oh, that correct. is good to know. 
Uh, you get two power as you are using two elements that it is opposed against, and its defense is now three instead of the five it would normally be. Perfect. And once again, I'm attempting to distract the elementals. All right. Enemy turn uh, rolls around to fly flesh consumed up on top. Oh, good. Mm. There is a severe, like a long moment as thy flesh consumed is staring at Angler, looking back at Yang, staring at Angler, before it attempts to break and it needs to roll a disengage roll to do this successfully. As it is realizing, okay, I could fist fight Angler, but that one's getting into the War Strider and that can't happen. What, you don't want to fight the guy who's good at close range combat? How dare you? <laughs> disengage what pool would it be using well it's probably going to be using its best pool because it's the water one what do what does it have to roll against uh double checking that real quick i'm sorry i i zoned out what is lingering decay uh that is a basically an aoe marker that's going to explode uh, okay Yeah, okay, so roll its best pool. And let's have you can, well. Okay, yeah. Uh, roll a reflexive finesse close combat and try to exceed seven. Otherwise, it is able to disengage and move to Yang. Nope. I, I yeah. rolled a three. Yeah, you, you just basically throw him out a haymaker, but it is able to just liquid dip under it and rush towards Yang. At which point it raises up both hands and tries to grab Yang on either side of the head. Wait, just... Captivating battle display. I zoop in front. <laughs> Go on. I don't remember this. Spend one mode on step two and target an opponent it, who is attacking an ally. The, tar yeah, it, the target's attack now hits the exalt instead. <laughs> this, is, this is cover move. Right, right, right. <laughs> so as it is, it's just like, okay, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. What the fuck? Yeah, as he... Angler throws the lazy punch and just smiles and backflips over the, water, the blood elemental and lands in front of him. Uh-uh. No, no. You don't get close. All right. What is your defense? Uh, I'm going to, and oh no, I I use this, so I can't use a different mode. So my defense right now is six on either. Okay. So it is able to build two power off of that, as it can't establish a solid grip on your head. You're able to duck and dive out of it, but it your head, your ears are now ringing from the force of even a glancing attempt to crush your head. Okay. Uh, by the way, the, my ally may make an attack on the target on step eight of this resolution as a counterattack, even if that ally has acted this round. So you <laughs> have to just shoot this guy in the face. Yang, you may roll uh, finesse close combat to just shoot it in the goddamn face. All right. Let's see here. What is my what is my close combat actually? Or actually, no, no, th this would be ranged combat because you're using your ballista. Unless you would be using close combat to just punch it. Well, no, because I'm the archer. I arch. Mm -hmm. Yang is just tearing stuff out of the war strider and tossing it in the direction. I have one fucking arm. Yang, Yang mm -hmm. turns around and has a mouthful of wires. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have both hands free, so I'm going to just say that, like, Yang fires his fucking like underarm crossbow that he uses for the burp line. Yeah, he just like casually mid tearing things apart, just sh shoots a wild shot past it. Does not manage to make a connection, but it alarms it deeply. And puts in a defense penalty on it because that is multiple sources of attacks on it in this turn. And that is enemy turn over. Uh, Repose and Angler have yet to go. 
So yeah, something go for it. There sure is a very strong set of words, a very fine adjustment to the rules that does a lot of good here. So uh, initiating grapples is a withering attack. It sure is. So Repose has been tumbling down the cliff for some dramatic amount of time, just kind of limply flopping <laughs> over rocks and sliding around. Bonk, bonk, and then bonk. as he gets very close to the bottom, suddenly, you know, lights up, tenses up a bit, grabs a thing, flings himself back into motion. So he is going to rush at Shit yep. Vincent and just kind of land abruptly next to him, like in this same slouching, traumatic posture with, with the claws out. Spend a moment just side-eyeing at him. Imitate a lot of like, you know, ominous wriggling of claws and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then with just a little bit of a twitch, cast off some dust just generally from his body in all directions. So you get that too. I find it helps to apply heat and then like claws of sunlight extend and he goes for the grab. <laughs> there is a distinct just, oh no, look on its face. <laughs> so this is not is what I came back for. No. Into a grab. <laughs> And let's toss the old excellency in there. And due to Janissary form, successfully rushing yep. a creature of darkness, supposing that eight is enough for the hit. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, that gives uh, that me is... three power anyway. Yeah, so you also get three more from the threshold successes. Well, no, so uh, the, oh, no, no, no. Right, as a right, grapple, right. instead of gaining power, I get to establish the grip. Yes. Uh, so we make an opposed force close combat roll to see who is in charge. Roll. It is, with every fiber of its being, just going, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Just... <laughs> Barely not enough, as, as it is repose, grabbing you of, by the throat to hold you at full arm's length away. But, so, like, the thing that throws him off is, instead of establishing a fighting grip, Repose is establishing, like, a medical therapeutic grip. <laughs> this is battle massage. He is just going for the, the backs <laughs> and sides of joints where pressure would be building and tension would be established, and just... He's just got this arm. <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Body massage. <laughs> oh, and uh, add the extra successes from the attack as bonus dice to this roll. Grabs cannot be clashed. So, how how much? You said add three threshold? Uh, yeah, on the, that was uh... three. three, three for, that was three threshold on your establishment. All right, so one more there. So seven, eight versus six. So I have two of advantage here, and let's see. So, yeah. While in the grab, both characters suffer minus one defense from outside attacks. Uh, within the grab, you have zero defense against each other and instead do opposed rolls of yep. flexing. It's just a slug match now because you don't have defense against each other. Yeah, so the moves attack, escape, overcome, pin, or throw, which, yeah, so those will all be on future turns of <laughs> we are wrestling. <laughs> And I've spent two more. Well, I recover one for start of turn and then have spent two. So down to eight and up to four anima. Which means that you are now glowing, I think, or whichever phase two is. I don't remember the break yes. point. Uh, it's two of dim, two of glow, and then two of burning. Yeah. And then the rest is bonfire into iconic. It means that my earth passive is on. If I just go ahead and scroll to where that is. Yeah, so passing up still stands. All right, that yep. becomes active at two.
which is add my essence to the cost of knockback and knockdown used yeah. against me. And cost of grapple, which elsewhere is saying that grapple isn't a gambit, I guess that's a defense boost that, against being grabbed instead. Yeah, I guess. That's probably a proofreading thing. This is yes. still the, the manuscript draft. <laughs> so, grabbing. Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, just on this field of the battle, the elementals are just. The elementals just going ah oh, no no oh, oh no like the, the the dread from the dust elemental has completely collapsed into just like oh man i've been here for five seconds and it's happening again <laughs> meanwhile rolls over to the colonian again as it's hard to read the body language of a war strider, but you get the distinct sense that it was not expecting to have to do this so quickly in such an order as one last blast of essence vents out of it as the blood channels now are exuding steam and gusts of air that suddenly go still and the air in above it just makes a dead pocket of a doldrum. And... Moment, while I grab the token, I put it in an inconvenient spot. There we go, there you are. And turn on the nameplate, because apparently got turned off again. There we go. The creature from Gunzoda reestablishes itself. And as a reminder, Sona literally called it default name as a fine. Like, we don't know its name. I'm just going to call it default. Gestures at that needs to be taken care of immediately. All right. And mm -hmm. enemy turn rolls around. Ow! Ow oh, sorry. Uh, Alice has taken a uh, abrupt dislike of me talking to people who is not her. Pet the cat. This is not a pet the cat situation. That was me trying to pet and getting bitten. Pet better. <clears throat> Apologies. Uh, Major. Sure. Broke, right? Hmm? Uh, no. Fine. Okay. You're fine. Yeah. She just decided to be a shit about it. Yeah. Cats are goblins sometimes. Mm. Sometimes. Okay, so that's been Repose, Shield, uh, Angler, you are last to act. I sure am. So we're standing on the cannon you are, lip, yeah, right? You are on the base of the cannon. Basically, if this was a tank, you would be on top of the rotating turret at the base of the gun barrel. Okay. Oh, this is so Just dumb. Switch. So, blood... Is blood solid, or is it just kind of a whirling mass of blood? It is a densely packed, but still malleable mass. It okay. is solid enough to actually physically attack this time. Nah, I'm okay with this. So Angler's going to use uh, Water Dragon form, and is just going to jump in the blood. Oh! <laughs> All right, uh, perennial storyteller question. Are you sure? He would do it. I don't know if it's the right idea or not. But All right, I, I just wanted to go. All right, you just jump straight on in. Um, is not there, in my head. Is there... He's gonna jump in and make a withering attack from inside it. Like he's getting inside and then just a, uh, a fist made of pure water pressure just juts out as he tries to I'm build I'm gonna count this as a try to establish a grapple. Sure. So, yeah, roll your withering attack. Uh, uh, pool. That's why I get two extra successes added onto this because of my weapon. Mm hmm. Angler is, in fact, taking the world's biggest sippy. Okay. And that is enough to beat its defense. 
So you are now in an established grapple, and now it is rolling uh, opposed force close combat to... Uh, where did the music... Why did you... What is its defense? I'm curious. Uh, six. Okay. Good to know. Well, no, it would have been five because of the shot from Yang, but either way. Yeah. Uh, bu- 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 so this is a force close combat to establish the strength of your co- of your grapple. Okay. Do I get a bonus because I did something really stupid? Uh, you get two successes from exceeding the defense. Well, three, right. actually. Uh, and yeah, just go ahead and get a stunt on this one, too. Yeah. I'd like to argue more, but again, voice. Also, like, yeah, no, you're still good. Uh, you are one over on the control as the Blood Elemental categorically in absolutely no way expected what just happened as you literally punch through the clotted exterior that was holding it into a physical form and just leap into the torso and let the clot cloves over you and it's just dealing with you just pinballing around on the inside and just churning it up and punching it from within as it is desperately now trying to punch its own hands into the blood and change the currents of its own body to try and fight back. You gave it anxiety. Do I get a free uh, withering attack after I do the grapple then? No, you have set it up that um, you are able to attack it without defense and you are able to do other stuff, as Got mentioned. Uh, turn order has reset. Be- Everyone is able to act again. Player does turn. anyone does anyone want to do anything before Milan fires the gun? You should really fire the gun. Okay, so has has default name started doing his void thing of sucking in air? Uh no, but I will tell you for free that the second that the enemy turn happens next, it is going to be draining all of your breath. Oh, like you can okay. see it revving up to do it. Okay, Milan is going to coalesce this ice missile into the shape of a door. <laughs> Oh, fuck you, get a stunt. <laughs> All right, and then... Target locked. There I mean, is... I mean, how do you how do you hit air except for hit all of it? It just makes sense. There is... There is a twinkle of light in the distance. A large gush of air blows past uh, default name. And freeze frame as Milan just a few feet away is flinging a door at default name. So this is going to be... This is a decisive attack. First step is how much of the power do you want to use? You don't have to use all of it, but you have to at least meet the hardness rating of the creature. Okay. I am using Glorious Exalted Bolt. Mm -hmm. I'm going all in. This is all 10 power. All right. Fuck him up, Socrates. Okay, spend one moat in step one, making ranged essence attack at short range using either sagacity or ranged combat. Treat this as a heavy ranged weapon. Artifact, yeah, a heavy ranged artifact weapon. It has many doors. <laughs> Fuck off. Okay, so I have declared an action. It may declare a defensive action. Um, let me look real quick and see which what, what the defense options I gave the Void Elemental were. Because <laughs> they're all working off of a similar stat block with unique tags on them. Did I think in advance that you would just throw a door again? My thought is I maybe did. Okay. Supernatural. Okay, I gave it... Yeah, one... Okay, I gave it one defensive option. Does it work here? Okay, uh, it will use a defensive option on step five, which okay. is going to be once after once you have rolled your damage. Uh, stop with the snapping now, stop. Ooh, okay, so hang on a sec. I get to decide, because this is an artifact weapon, whether I take an extra point of accuracy or an extra point of, def- of damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see...
Okay, I'm going to take the extra point of damage this does. Mm -hmm. So that is nine successes. All right, that is its defense is seven. It is the most defensively dodgy one. Uh, so yeah, that hits with two threshold successes. All right, uh, now we determine the damage pool. I believe that's just the amount of power you wagered. And does threshold successes affect this? Double checking, I don't think so, but let me just double check that on the quick sheets. Oh, where is the stupid thing? Yeah, it's power. Okay, yes, you do. So it is 12. You were rolling 12 for your damage. Whew. Okay, uh, I forget. In damage, do 10s double? Yes, they do. That is 7 damage. Okay. So its soak is 4. It is the least soak of all of them. It has three successes, and it is burning a whopping three motes in the system to activate Durant Aegis. Uh, it is subtracting its essence from the attack um, successes coming in. So uh, this, is on, this is on step eight. Uh, wait. Oh, no, that was subtraction for. OK, I'm going to let that stand because I actually screwed up the order of operations. Okay. It's, it's going to take three damage. I have something on step seven. Okay, Elemental it's... Bolt Attack, which is the Dragon-Blooded uh, move of Glorious Exalted Bolt. On Step 7, target hit must take a Reflexive Physique roll at Difficulty 3 to resist environmental damage equal to the Exalted es the Exalt's Essence plus 2. Oh god. Uh, that is not going to be what you're good at, so... Make a... F make a Physique... a Reflexive Physique roll! Nope! <laughs> so that's an extra 6 damage! How much health did I give you? Are you going to die in one hit to a door again? Yes, you are. This was the <laughs> dodgy, fragile one. <laughs> so what happens is it manifests. Exactly exact damage. Crunch. It manifests. It, it goes, okay, okay, I got to do the move. Hey, what's that glimmer of light? And then in the next second a door made of ice just flattens it into the ground. Yeah, like the stagnant air pocket as it is coalescing to suck the liar out of all of your lungs just gets completely crushed by the frozen door. And it's just, there is no movement from beneath it. There is nothing. There is no attempt to haul it off. It's just gone instantly. Discorporated. I have sent it even further down through the underworld. Into the underworld too through the ground. Happy birthday to the ground. Oh, take well. that default name. All right. I feel bad, but and no, then... you shouldn't. <laughs> that was the, again, he was the dodgy, annoying one to hit. That was going to be extremely devastating if you let him live. It is very lucky for you that you let him die in one hit. Uh, mechanically, in essence, I was going to be that every action you took until you dealt with the breath attack was three success penalty, as in you have negative three successes on every roll you do. It is quite handy that you crushed him. So enemy turn, and I'm just going to have that be Shavinson, Shavinson and the ads. So... I'm going to handle the ads first. First of all, do either of the Lingering Decays blow up yet? Number one. Uh, yes. Number two, yes. Okay, they both blow up. All right, so that creates two environmental hazards. 
me see. All right, Angler and Yang, roll me Fortitude Physique versus a difficulty of four. Uh, do I get any penalty or bonus by being inside the blood? Um, yeah, your difficulty is two. Okay. I refuse to leave the spot. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> well, at least it's not a botch. Impressive. I kind of wish it was. That'd be funny to see what happens. I, 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 it's fine. That's just fucking funny. I'm sorry. It's very good. <laughs> Let's get down. Pet cat, but not a good Look out. What? <laughs> I'm inside blood. What? I can't look. <laughs> It's all right. The blood should protect him from the impact. Pfft, the blood is magnifying the impact. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Yang is able to just have the hair on the back of the neck stand up as you realize that the bloated pile of decay behind you is about to burst and you just fucking duck and cover, hit the ground, cover your head as a shockwave of pressure and gore uh, flies over your head and slams directly into thy flesh consumed, who does not seem bothered by this. However, the impact pressure slams into it and then slams into Angler. Uh, let me double check. Does... Is it a roll for the damage of an environment? No, it's automatic, right. Okay, Angler, you take two lethal damage. No silk or anything blocks that, correct? It, unless you have any abilities that directly interact with environmental damage, no. Uh, I one don't sec. Think so. Okay. I'm at minus ones then. Uh, do remember that you have uh, elemental defense. Is this How exactly does that earthy? Interact? Hold, well, hold. That's the question. Is this explosion earthy? Uh, it's necrotic, no. Alright. Damn. Uh, as an aside, it is plus two soaking hardness against the element. Okay. Alright, and second lingering decay blows up. Uh, similar roll. Difficulty 4, Fortitude, and Physique roll for Obsidian and Repose. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, the second Lingering Decay down here is blowing yeah, yeah, yeah. up. So you were both also rolling Physique, Fortitude. Okay. <sighs> One moment. Gonna... Okay, that is a good follow-up move. Uh, anywho. Marking down another moat. Excellence. Repose literally does not notice. It just bounces clean off his back. Hmm. I have a different follow-up if, if I fail this roll. Alright. You are down by one. So, what is your follow-up idea? Because I may be able to get, like, that is close enough that if you have a good follow-up idea or response. Well, okay, does this actually take soak or whatever into account? Let me double check. I don't think it does by default. Environmental hazards deal damage every X rounds or exposure. Uh, ignores soak. Yes. Okay. Give me... Two seconds. Uh, my thing was increasing my soak. I may have a different follow-up, so... Un, un, un moment. No, it has some dumb, stupid thing.
<laughs> no, actually, it's the same thing. Yeah, uh, I spend the one moat for Iron Kettle Body because here's the here's the flavor text. Alternatively, the exalt may apply their soak to environmental damage. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know you're yeah. good then. <laughs> Just, it doesn't it doesn't apply the soak, does it? <laughs> yeah, that's why I said if you have moves, because I know there are moves that let you. Also, yeah, on the side, as the camera just noticed, the Ash Reaper is realizing that the melee up on top of the Worst Rider is probably not something that they can interfere with very easily, have decided to make the ring and begin to summon the Ash Fog and Dust creature of the Decayed Remnants. Uh, if you remember the reigning ashes of all of the people who died in the Wild Pocket and their attempt to create a creature out of that, yeah, they're doing that again. It does not look like it is complete, but uh, also looks like it's going to be a bad time if it does get completed. Mm, mm, mm. Is, that wi is that wild stuff happening over there? Roll me finesse sagacity, actually. That's a good question. <laughs> is, that, is anybody else want to take that roll? No? Okay, cool. You're the one who asked it, motherfucker! I got one! <laughs> I am a little busy right now. Burgle, 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 burgle. Yeah, anybody who, could be, who would be paying attention may roll, but Obsidian just looks out and goes, Whack. <laughs> I've got a horse's eye view of the field. I can, I can see what that is. Hey, wait, yeah, hang on. That was a wild plague. That shouldn't be possible down here. How is that happening? How are they summoning a wild plague in the underworld? Oh, fuck. We, we get, no, we gave the fey magic. Ah! <laughs> and for Repose in particular, uh, that's going to be very bad if it's fully summoned, because that's just going to start basically being a matter-antimatter reaction down here. Just kind that's of cool. briefly create a moment to point <laughs> sternly with free hand at that, and then carry on with the, the gripping. Mm. All right. Shavinson is going to desperately try to punch back in the grapple against your nun defense. And gets a pretty solid clock across the jaw and builds seven power unless you have something to do. Well, it's an I... opposed roll rather than defense. Yeah, oh, right, right, so. right, right. Well. Oh, right, because you're grappled. I can't. Yeah. I can't defend action this. No, this is they are holding on to each other and punching each other. So we have the ranged DPS crawling around in a mech. The monk is currently inside, inside of another of creature. Mob. The uh, the black mage is just on their horse shooting spells willy nilly, and the two tanks are on one monster. Look, I'm dealing with yeah, the so ads. Shave three off of that. All right, so that is build four power. And that is the elaborate action of the dust elemental complete player turn activate. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, is any of this information that Milan and Repose uh, get gathering uh, relayed over the net? Are, I, pre uh, I presume you were all in constant communication when possible. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Angler will ask a question just in the ether there of what would happen if we introduce some matter to that angel right now. Well, if it is a very delicate process to summon it, something that interrupts it would probably have some sort of notable effect. Cool. Angler's going to do something really dumb then. I'm so, for you keep saying that and you keep escalating. Oh, it's uh, I'm gonna push it. Uh, so Angler's standing on the rim of the. Uh, well, turret, you're floating right? inside of the thing on the rim. Yes. Cool. Angler's going to on step one, use. The, the faux restraining whirlpool. 
I'm gonna pull that water, the, all the blood directly <laughs> onto my body. Oh my god! And then Angler's gonna fall off the edge of the turtle and use the forward pain roll pulls shell to shoot the blood elemental directly at the ankle of the Ashen Plague. Because the whirlpool would keep dragging it during your fall. Oh my god, yes! Correct. Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus, how do you even do this? Um. So, for a straining whirlpool is you activate that on the step. Mm hmm and that just goes. There's no roll on that, as far as Correct. I remember. And then the second shot of it is spending the committed mode and an additional two. Oh, I don't have two power. Nope, damn. <sighs> if only I had power. I will okay. let you pay this in health levels. Done. I will happily do that. Yeah, in that case, yeah. I feel I like you were a little here. too quick to that, but okay. I'm a, <laughs> yeah. now have, cool I'm, I'm, jo I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. You have you, you have four lethal damage now, as you are literally tearing your body open to shed your blood to lure the blood down towards you. It is not just the faux restraining whirlpool. It is literally tearing yourself open to make it compulsively chase you. Oh, uh, Angler. Uh, at some point during this, his uh, robe on his back gets torn just from the uh, pressure and he lets the blood elemental go through his gills on his back, pulls every single bit of blood elemental in as he's falling down, lands in a horse stance, and then exhales everything out directly at the Angel of the Ashen Plague. All right, <laughs> does the shout have a role on itself? Let's look at this. Uh, this, bu, 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 bu. this is a one-time environmental damage effect that extends out to medium range. This environmental effect inflicts four damage and resisted at difficulty seven. All right, I'm going to have uh, three rolls for this, one for the angels, uh, one for the angel, one for the reapers, one for the uh, elemental. Uh, elemental's resistance roll to this is going to be extremely low, as this is directly targeting its weakness. Absolutely not. The reapers are individually fairly weak, so... Absolutely not. And the angel has probably the best chance, but uh, that we'll see. No. All right, so all of the reapers just pop the moment that the shockwave goes out and the blood explodes outwards. Uh, thy flesh consumed immediately just slams into the angel of the ashen plague. And there is the rather disgusting sound of not just a, like, a bucket of blood being poured out from onto a floor from a high height, but also the sound of, like, boiling. And not just boiling, boiling up through solid matter. It is a liquid at a boil that is having to push through something to get up and continue boiling as the angel kind of sublimates into the liquid which begins to churn and violently shudder and then just explodes into a shower of clots and human-sized chunks that fall down and begin to get back up. One second. Well, I don't like that second part. I no, just doing the mechanic. Yeah, yeah but I got rid of the other thing. Is. I figured this was gonna happen, but Angler was okay with it. Blood bones. Uh, Instead of the elemental, you now have the elemental in many pieces as a battle group. <laughs> Round two. Uh, refreshing. I might be desynced. Mm hmm. Okay, there we go. I I saw the blood splatters, and then still the elemental was present for me. Okay, I guess so. This round, just reviewing and keep track of it, has been Milan fires the door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dust Defense elemental M activates the mechanics. Angler does this move just now. Mm hmm. Yeah, Obsidian has not actually acted Obsidian, yet. Obsidian yeah, hasn't reaction. acted yet. 
We've been exploded at, but you still yeah. have a turn. You did a reaction, but not your turn. All right. All right. <sighs> so repose, Yang, and Angler. Or no, no, repose, Yang, and Obsidian can still go. Uh, I'll go. Oh wait, no. Hang on. Player just went. So it's enemy action turn. Uh, the Catonian is deeply unhappy with this chain of events and is going to roll just to fucking bite. It's just gonna try and bite. At, um, down towards Obsidian and it is very obvious at the moment, it's like, well, is it gonna try to bite? Oh no, it's just gonna try and crunch the Dust Elemental and both of you in the mouth at the same time. Um. The very sound strategy. It's just going, fuck it, I'm killing them, I don't care what the collateral is. Okay. No, I have a move for this. Parry, Go on. Parry, parry, parry. It's more so than that. So it's coming down. Oh, did, oh yeah, I did not go this turn. Yeah, let me remove my thing. So it's com coming down. Mm -hmm. And my initial thought is, ah, okay, it's going to kill the Dust Elemental. Then remembering that my brother is in there as well. You and the brought your other. Well, I can handle it, but my brother can't get away immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, I okay. So immediately, hey, I can take a defend other action. Immediately, mm -hmm. I'm in my stance. You know what my defend other action is going to be? Please, please tell me. Because you're really gonna like this. I have a feeling I know what it is, but please tell me. Uh, I gotta make sure I get the right one here. So, uh, give me a second here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use Triumph Forge God Body. <laughs> I had this on the side because I knew! So, this is three votes immediately to grab it as it's coming down. And just hold it in place. Alright. Force physique. Wrestle the War Strider. Unfortunately, I don't have... Wait, do I have the physique mastery? Is that one of the ones I bought? Hold up. <laughs> okay. Four modes are being spent. <laughs> Is there a stunt on this? Yes, of course there is! <laughs> As Obsidian immediately bursts into flames. Just As grabbing the beak in one hand and the lower beak in the other, and just sandwiching the sword in between the mouth to prevent it from closing <laughs> as it is shrieking as the rings are rotating. <laughs> Not today! It is by far the most pain your muscles have ever been in. You are straining with absolutely every fiber of your muscle from your arms to your shoulders to your legs, barely standing, but still pushing back, gritting your teeth nearly so hard that you can feel them almost crack, but you are not bending. <laughs> Player turn. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Well, you have five power. Points. You do have five power, and you are grappling the thing. Just turn, and I'm going to slam this thing into the ground. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As I'm spending one more moat for a 15 d10 close quarters. I assume Normally that's I wouldn't work. let you do this to a horse trainer, but fuck it, let's go live! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> the dice know yeah. what sick shit's happening! 
<laughs> yes, Tavarish! Slit it wide open! As you just lift impossibly as everyone turns to see the entire war strider lifted by all four legs dangling and wobbling in the air desperately for a grip even if it is only a few feet off the ground you are lifting hundreds of tons of bone and steel and jade and you throw it to the side like a breath like just you are twist your entire torso and spin it and slam it directly on its side as it is wailing and oh, screaming no, and just yes. contortions of metal. Sorry, I just got a, I just got a message and this is so much better. Can I throw it at the flood? <laughs> I will let you slam it on the blood. I will let you slam it on the blood. I will count that as a decisive attack on them. Okay, I will roll my five against the blood. Honestly, this is enough of an environmental destruction attack. Roll, um, eight plus eight, 13. Roll 13 against them. Just use all <laughs> of the successes from your attack to crush it. Oh, there you go. <sighs> All right, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Most of it is just obliterated instantly with the as the war blow. strider just sails over angler. <laughs> Crunch. You know, I did that with a moose, so I feel like I taught him that. But no, nah, that was <laughs> all him. And hoofa, that was uh, <laughs> that was one action and. Obsidian spent. <laughs> yeah, that was like most of your moat pool in one go. It's a ding, all right. But it was cool, and that's what matters. Ding, okay? It's fine. Fine. Yeah, Yang, Yang was able to get off the gun barrel in time. Yang doesn't even notice. Honestly, Yang Very may have just wires. been clutching to the thing the whole time and didn't I want to still be there, yeah. Yang knows how to ride the horse. Yang is just still holding onto the gun barrel like, huh, gravity's sideways now, that's different. Actually, hang on, is there a rotate function in roll 20? Not that I can see. Not fast uh, enough for it to be funny. If you grab a token, there is a little oh, wait. Yes. wand yes. that extends off the top with the arrow, and yep, flip. Oh, oh no! <laughs> All right, uh, enemy turn. I'm just gonna say the blood spatters just start fucking try and run. They're just going. They're like, no, 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 no. They're just both scrambling for the blood rift. That is their entire turn. It's just a double rush to get to the blood and try and get the fuck out. <laughs> Player turn. <laughs> it is... Repose and Yang have left to act. Uh, yeah, I'll go. All right. So I want to scramble on all fours back up to where I was, the open hatch. Mm-hmm. And I have a charm. It is called... <laughs> Let me just look at this. Uh... Ah, fuck, where was it? Here we go. <clears throat> Truth rendering gaze. Mm -hmm. And the thing I wrote is, stare at shit to serve meaning. Force plus sagacity of not mundane. And I want to stare into the innards of this thing and go like, where's the worst spot to put a rock? You may divine the purpose and function of a mundane object, etc, etc. Dragon blood, and you may automatically succeed when studying a jade artifact that matches your aspect. <laughs> Fuck Guess yeah, what this man. originally was before it got corrupted. Was it wood? It was wood because it was the honorary funeral of a fucking wood dragon. I'm so yeah. Yang's just gonna take out a stick, give the old chin a bit of a rub, and then just throw it in there. You just throw. It's, you channel your essence into the stick. Rub it along and throw it into the open mouth as the entire war strider is thrashing. 
and you just kind of open your ear and listen as it plummets down into the essence reactor and everyone hears a muffled, devastatingly loud <laughs> can noise to add a metallic noise, I guess. But just an entire inner thump as the essence reactor violently reacts to the infusion of wood essence and the entire war strider just seizes. And that is the worst writer cannot act twice in a row, and the pilot is doing something on the inside that I am not going to publicly disclose yet, so repose this Swearing. Right. Well, among that, yes. Repose, who has just been, like, th there's probably been, like, just a momentary ceasefire in the grip as all of that sure just happened over there. <laughs> Both of you just stop slugging each other and look over just like, holy fuck! <laughs> And then just as the book settles back in between the two of them, they just do this. Every day is like this. <laughs> There's just a look of uncomprehending You just terror. want to set yourself firmly in place and just, and propose like emits earthen noise and shockwave into the ground. And that makes people think they can just... <laughs> right? <laughs> you, just, you just kind of emotes a lot as his anima continues to flare up. <laughs> there, just, again, there is nothing behind the eyes of the elemental aside from just like... You know, I thought I, felt, I thought I knew what being afraid felt like. I have learned today. They just do this because they expect... It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You can take this. And most days they're right. And then these days. Right? <laughs> it just reposes continuing to charge and I guess mechanic wise he's just gonna be doing a withering attack into this, but yeah. he's establishing grip and all the while just going on about sure, preparing his body to sympathize with the energy flows of this massive, frustrated, unsettled Earth. Yep. Earth which refuses to cohere and set firm. Refuses to bury things. Very tangible Earth in mass. Alright, go ahead and roll. Yeah, just using the old one moat for the turn. On oh, excellence. Here's a five. All right. And opposition roll. Uh, get two power. And initiative order resets. Everyone uh, is three. able to move again. Well. Everyone is able, if willing, to move again. I have an additional move. All right, go on. So you know that parasitic orchid that we've established? And yes. I want you to know how big the smile on my face is and right now, but go on. So what if I just have a bag of those seeds? <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to toss it into the exact same yang. way that the stick was in there and just be like, all right, well, that's the right trajectory, so... Bon appetit, bitch. <laughs> bon apple tea. I have no idea what this will do, but it's probably going to be funny, and that's all I need. At <laughs> times like this, I think we all need to take a very deep breath. <laughs> Mainly because I want this to finish and the gem not to 
I'm die. fine. I'm fine. I'm delighted. I've never been more fine. I have absolutely no idea what this could possibly do to a mech, but we're going to find out today. <laughs> you sure fucking are. <sighs> today, we're all going to learn. <laughs> okay. So let's go over, as everyone else sees, Yang pull out a bag of seeds and just kind of undo the straps and upend the bag and pour it down the cavernous mouth of the War Strider. What those orchids were. They were orchids, parasitic in nature. Therefore, they thrive by growing upon other life, decayed or otherwise. They also, by virtue of how Yang cultivated them, absorb essence and then radiate it back out. There was the orchid that was cultivated that had a full balance of all five elements back in Bismuth's Grove. So, hypothetically speaking, what happens when you throw a bunch of seeds that have been charged with wood essence into a complete reactor? Yeah, a bag of the orchid seeds is going to effectively be thousands of them. Uh, what happens when you throw a bag of wood aspected seeds that absorb essence into the reactor furnace of a war strider that was originally created in the Shogunate era and therefore has some really powerful essence reactions in it? The answer is pretty much immediately apparent by, at first, it almost sounds like popcorn going off, just a chain reaction of tiny explosions that accelerate faster and faster. And then it goes quiet for a second. And then it gets very loud again as the War Strider actually screams. It is not just the sound of metal on metal. It is an actual scream of distress from the War Strider and its pilot as all of the plating begins to tear away. The soul steel is being pushed up and off. The rivets are bouncing out as vines and growth are coming out and ripping it piece by piece. All of the scrap metal that has been bolted onto the bone and jade is being shredded and pushed and unmade and eroded. And just the sheer force of growth as the wood aspect is absorbing and devouring all of the essence left over in the war machine as all of the fiends that had been shepherding it and keeping it in a balanced reaction are either dead or outside of it. The entire war machine in less than 30 seconds is beginning to bloom in a gigantic garden as it is just clawing at the ground and trying to pull itself back upright. There is definitely a moment from Obsidian at this point where he finally catches his breath, turns to the left, and just goes, Is that good? Oh, that's pretty. Look at that. <laughs> Not even dead. Incredible. Actually... It might come to this point that Obsidian runs over and grabs Yang and starts to run yeah, away. As yeah, it... uh, I'm writing notes. I'm not leaving. You have to fucking tear me off this thing. No, yeah, no, I'm just going to say. No, under the power of my super strength. You are like, like just fucking like a finger hauls Yang up off the damn thing. I grab you by the scruff of your neck and throw you 50 feet away. Whee! <laughs> Yeah, and like a couple of seconds later, the, the, the spot that Yang had been standing on becomes completely overgrown. As let us just switch over the music. The War Strider begins to tremble uncontrollably as the last of the fiends within it tears itself free in a shedding of embers and ash and broken charred wood gasping almost for air as the elemental is almost made more of the gaps between the guttering flames than it is the actual flames 
as you take one look at the creature that is emerging from the mouth of the war strider to escape the verdant overgrowth and immediately realize that this isn't just a fire elemental. This is an elemental of the dying embers of a fire. As an aside, when you switch the music there, bro. Uh, yeah, hang on. Is it working again? Or yes. there we are. It is now. And let us move you to where you should be. It is a guttering fire, barely able to hold a spark on its own, that is consuming the orchids almost as fast as they can grow, but not fast enough, desperately kindling itself into a flame again, going from an exhausted, near-dead spark, trying to flat match its former glory as a flame, and is just a cornered animal. There is nothing there anymore beyond panic. And that is enemy action, player action. Uh, Milan will take an action. Uh, that's cool. Milan is just spamming the Hearthnet chat with pogging emotes. <laughs> <laughs> just. Oh my god, did you just. What, what Obsidian did and what Yang just did? Alright, what this is, is I'm making a rally act action. All right. Yeah, stunt. Go ahead. Oop, stunt. Okay, that is... And I can divvy this up however I want. So five is going to repose. As I am just in repose's brain just sh shouting, Oh my god. Duh. Just being that voice in Repose's head that's making and him I, go. <sighs> the exact voice of the ultra combo. <laughs> Yell out from Killer Instinct. <laughs> then the remaining four go to Angler. That's Malone's action. All right, enemy turn, blood turn. Um, unless somebody has an immediate reaction, they're just gonna dive into the vent and get the fuck out. Yeah, Angler kind of looks over and goes, whatever. I, I can't stop them at this point. All my right. Tank, get... My tank is gassed. Yeah, just, yep, fuck it, bye. And player action again. Well, I'm sure I have power now that I could use to uh, perform an act. Mm-hmm. Get out the old spirit shredding attack. Which is step three, so I can also just boost the swing itself. And so, like, proposes continue to ramble on while conducting the, uh, the grab. <laughs> The violent physical therapy of mm -hmm. horrible bone creature. And the worst of it is that you already knew all of that. You know that 
I get like this and it'll pass. I'll move on. I'll find new footing. No matter how well you know that that's how it's supposed to go, it just doesn't happen. And probably, like, flash back a bit to, like, pre-invasion camp of Propose. Probably with, with Milan being main sounding board to talk to about this. Of Repose's had a breakthrough in how to think about the the shadow elementals as beings. Mm -hmm. Of each of them has been how they have been killed is they have been reduced into a closed cycle of one. They are a single state of a greater whole that has been denied its ability to escape. Yep. Earth that cannot coalesce, air that cannot move, blood that cannot give life, fire and fire that, that cannot burn. That can neither flare up nor die out. Goat. It cannot gutter out nor can it flare. But then, per other preparatory talks he would have had with Yang about the idea of how to do ghost riding. That for such a being who has just a gap in their spirit as plain and real and tangible as if a limb had been torn from your body, If you can just get yourself into position, if you can establish some harmony, some resonance, and then allow yourself to fill that gap, you can become the outlet through which they can, even for a moment, express something that has been denied to them. Mm-hmm. Repose will get a firm footing. And then one hand just onto shoulder and then other hand, you know, sharpened and ready for what would in normal fighting be, you know, disemboweling stab into the guts. And then just firm look at him. Hey, you got this. And then drive spike of energy into an absence where the heart of this mass of Earth should be. Get a stunt and roll the roll the decisive attack. This is going to resolve slightly differently than a normal decisive. Five. All right, roll fifteen dice. <laughs> That's bigger than a normal number. Yeah, I'm assuming you're spending all 10 power on this. Yes. Four? All right. You punch it straight in the void where its heart should be, and there is just this shuddering gasp, not of pain, but of release, as you can just feel your hands, as in this empty space, reflexively close, and as they are Almost as your hand is almost about to grip into a fist, you feel it grip something. And that something pushes out against your fingers and grows. As you can feel the dust bursting off of the elemental as it is dissolving. As the little bits of it left that remember what it once was coalesce into the stone heart that you are holding. <sighs> Nothing remains aside from a smooth heart-shaped stone in the palm of your hand. Solemn nodding. Th 
the Cinder Elemental seeing this just staggers away from the orchids as they are clinging to the flame body and the, and the ashes and dust and cinder and collapses on its hands and knees in front of Obsidian in a position of just abject wordless begging. It doesn't have the capacity, but you know exactly what it is saying. Give me release. Let me burn or let me go out. So. On Obsidian's turn. Because this is something I can do with it. I want to make sure of something. Yeah, it says commit a moat, but this is more or less super. F oh wait, no. I this is to... this is basically no, no, no. post combat. Yeah, I, I, you all. I, I, I think. I think. Irregardless, it doesn't matter anyway. It's the only person that's like in full fucking bonfire. Yeah, that's you. Obsidian just sort of places a hand in front of the Cinder Elemental. And uses Dragon Grace weapon to just inject his burning aura into the elemental. It seizes up as you just draw it. And again, your fingers on the inside of its body, tracing through it, feel something along its back and as your fingers trace through you can feel the backbone and reflexively you almost grab it and pull and the body begins to collapse as you pull out a jet black burnt to coal and cinder spinal column that has been sharpened into a club as the cinders finally flare one last time into a full flame as you fill it with the true essence that it had been denied. And the moment you pull the burning brand out of the fire, it dissipates into a single wisp of smoke. We did it. We did it. The turtle's still there. It's a it fell over, but as you as you comment on that, it finally, through the sheer weight of flowers, lurches over onto its side and gets back on its feet. Decidedly in a moment of wait a minute, that has no pilot. Why is it moving? As the flowers themselves, you can see, are forming a sort of external musculature around the shell and the bones and the jade. As more and more of the soul steel is falling off to expose the contorted and destroyed skeleton of the former wood dragon. And in the empty sockets that had been burning red with stolen energy are now two immense, blooming, blood-red orchids. Cool. That's fucking metal. There is a rattling intake and another now blood-chilling, triumphant scream from the body as it staggers step by single step, learning to walk once more down to the south. Yang limp in 
Obsidian's arms as he's being carted away is just fucking doing a full-on Hojo cackle of, Yes, my child! Yes! <laughs> yes, Rapose will wrap the stone heart in a little funeral sh shroud. Mm -hmm. Get it properly marked up. Bush splits, spits out some blood and just lays, not lays down, but sits down on the ground. Uh, okay. Milan? Uh, sorry. No, that's it. Milan is going to land the horse, get off, and walk over to the ice, the door-shaped ice he had, lawn, he had thrown into the uh, void elemental and just sort of run his hand through the, through the mist and the, uh, the moisture that's coalescing and evaporating off of it. Shh. It's okay. Just go wherever it takes you. And then just sort of blow, blow the mist away. There is this almost inexpressible quiet certainty there's nothing left behind but you can feel the wind at your back deep breath and I and Milan turns to face the tower and after it proposes given just a preliminary internment of the stone heart into some kind of portable vessel mm -hmm. some kind of small coffin mm -hmm. just kind of scoot over to Yang who is still cackling and celebrating a giant turtle robot and Give him a bit of a poke and then <laughs> point it at Bleeding Angler. What? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, sure. I can turn it off for like a minute. <laughs> Still going to be laughing on the inside. I'm all right. Most of the blood isn't mine. That's the worrying part. Oh, God. There's so much blood. <laughs> you want me to roll here or do you want to just say... Uh, this is going to be relevant because, again, you're going to be keeping track of these moats in future scenes unless extended periods of time happen. So, yeah, this is important <laughs> to roll on. Yeah, okay. next encounter Obsidian's in full-on support mode. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, you can't say it wasn't worth it. It was body it. slammed a war strider. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here's the gas range. Remember that you regenerate one mote of energy every turn, newbie. Yeah, every, every turn, turn of right. combat. So that yeah. was probably two I or three moats. Going to use the position technique. It is a moat. Mm -hmm. It is force plus sagacity, and I just get two successes. Okay. What is my force? Probably ten. No, it's probably five. That's a nine, actually. Weird. He ain't got worse at healing. <laughs> and we all lost a couple things in the transition. Or did he? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Two on top of that, on top of the so. That nine? is nine successes. How does that translate? I don't know. Uh, remind me of the name of the charm again. Master Physician or? Yeah, Master Phys Physician Technique. Okay, so treat injuries with double nines against the total level of damage in the health track. Oh, double nines? So even more than. Yeah, Love a it. difficulty of the total levels of damage in your health track. Success allows you, patient, to treat this as the recovery scene and regain all health levels lost. So yeah, uh, Angler has to take it easy for the rest of the scene, but will actually recover all damage by the end of it. I mean, there's all this blood, we could just put it back into you. No, it's no, fine, right? No, no, different blood, different blood. Different it's, blood. it's, it, it'll work out. You stay away from me. 
Although that Dips door thing was really cool. Yep, that that's typo. You're good. Uh, Angler, do me a favor. What's up? Uh, roll me your essence flat. Uh, four. You notice something a little odd. Oh, good. What now? The good kind of odd, actually. So, you are very saturated and, like, to the point of, like, ugh, I've got the blood inside me because I had all the gills and I couldn't cough all of it up and I was worrying about, you know, the thing is a bloodborne elemental that infests and then consumes blood. And then you realize something. Your own essence immune system combined with the external everything that just happened, you realize that it is no longer blood dripping out of your gills, it's water. Your body passively exercised the blood elemental because it treated it as an immune response. It was exposed to just too intense a water source because it's inside your body. And could not resist exorcism. We did. We did hit this thing with a a batch of incredibly extra seeds, and then also watered it at the same time by accident. Huh? Mm-hmm. Am I gonna grow a plant inside my body? Wouldn't that be cool? No. <laughs> I think it'd be cool. Wait, actually, how did you he he did you grow a plant inside my body to heal me? <laughs> Yeah, that's how that works. Fuck. That you cough, plants, you cough like, up a flower petal. Oh, no. That was some tissue membrane. Neat, huh? I would like you also to stay away from me right now. I give everyone else bedside manners. You don't get them. That's extra for you. <laughs> I'd like to ask what I did to you, but I'm sure I deserve it. You ambushed me. And kicked my ass and called it training. You're a bush. You're fine. Also, you asked for that. Leaving that part out conveniently. <laughs> so, yeah, now it is a moment of just complete eerie serenity as the. Well. You're not entirely sure what's going on with that war strider right now, but I don't think it's your problem. Well, Ideal, maybe towards war. So, L long term problem, maybe. Short term, probably not. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Very looking forward to see to seeing exactly what sort of problem that is about to turn into. The army should be fine. They'll, they'll probably notice the orchids and figure out we did something. Uh, Angler's going to use wind-carried words to send to the leaders of the army to give a heads up about what's coming. I may have made a bigger monster, but it might be friendly. Uncertain. We did something. Success pending. <laughs> it may have invented a new local god by accident. That'd be cool. The only response back is from Guan. Define something! Um, if you see a big thing with plants on it, Yang helped. No, I'm gonna excitedly start DMing you mean exactly help. what I did. I don't know. Blame your kid. I, I'm already DMing Sybil, just being like, yo, 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 you up? I just did the funniest <laughs> shit. <laughs> There is like a non-verbal, inexpressible, just the equivalent of getting a DM of nothing but exclamation points in response. Alright, you know what? If Obsidian had a phone, he would also be telling her about how he picked up a war strider. <laughs> Right. Did you mention something, Repose? Just looking over at... 
yes, I do have, yeah, the, the relevant spirit looking at stuff is in awareness, though I don't have general purpose sorcerer's sight. Did anyone take that? I feel like somebody did. I, maybe on? I, I think I, I, think think I, I have. actually want to, to retroactively explain in the moment is that Yang specifically got the seeds from cuttings of parasitic orchids that had been tended to by a community wishing for peace and protection. So and from bismuth, yes. Yes, and specifically like, this will probably make it less likely to turn into a Godzilla. It's probably more of a Gamera, hopefully. I, probably I, more I, of a Gamora, really, yeah. I, I think Milan, yeah, has that sorcery sight stuff. Bond so not with those will take out the small coffin for a heart. <laughs> it, probably he's put it into a jar. He's got yeah. he's got the the mummification jars on hand, of course. We, we can all hope that that's not a galala. <laughs> <laughs> and just uh, you know slide on up to Milan. Is this what I think it is? <laughs> Just kind of will, will cooperate on giving it a bit of a, a wizardly look over a material object left behind after doing the thing here. Hey, is this a, is this a tangible remnant? Is this a core of some sort? For successes on st Starrett Rock. And some helping you with the Starrett Rock. Think about rock. Think about rock. Roll eight more dice to think about rock. Closely observe rock. It is considerably diminished in power and radiance from the level of power that the Earth Dragon likely had in life, but yeah, that is that is the resting dead core of a dry uh, of an Earth Dragon. Rock haunted. It's not dead in the sense of underworld dead. It's just elemental that has ceased to be an entity and is now just element when we get back inert dead matter when we get back home maybe you should bury that the same goes for the spine and any of the other traces left behind the air shall go in, where the wind takes it of my family's past disagreements with these beings we've but before managed to uh to procure remains in prior conflicts nothing remained what do you make of that what do we make of this what do we make of this he's definitely already planning and Composing the appropriate prayers to be like, hey, we have. We have a guest. We have a treasure. We have something. I found a thing. I found battle data. God, that fight was great. I had several mechanics up my sleeve, depending on how things went. You could have used the pillars for cover. Danger soup was going to be an emergency button for void elemental or blood, but just God, I love how that went. Good fight. Good fight. And mentally drained, which is probably a good sign. Yeah, uh, uh, any further than this is going to be uh, se uh, severely relevant plot stuff and then lead up into exploration into more combat so it's a bit early but i'm going to call it here because progressing much further is going to slam into things of high importance as this is basically this this is the part in 14 where it is the quest that is the title of the expansion and it doesn't take the foot off the gas quest accepted crimes of nature yes exactly <laughs> Next time, we now have Flower Strider. Uh, now we have to deal with uh, what uh, happens uh, with the reaction to the Flower Strider <laughs> and the armies and the Weaver reacting to this and going into the manse and figuring out what's going to happen in there. Oh, God. This was only step one of a lot of problems being addressed. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Next time.
consequences. Ne next time, mission status is sick. Next time, Obsidian still has one trick up his sleeve. Mm-hmm.